Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sketching and painting a little corner restaurant in Prague. And I will be starting my sketch with a pencil first before using my pen, which is filled with water resistant ink. I will also be using this notebook, which has 300 GSM paper in it, as well as this Windsor & Newton Cotman Sketchers pocket box. You can find links to all the materials down in the description below. So this is the reference photo which I captured myself when wandering the streets of Prague. And I'm going to start this sketch by doing some small marks to indicate where the building should be on the page. I'm also dividing up the portions on this building so the left side is much bigger than the right side and the bottom half is also taller than the top half this is a great way to make sure your drawing is centered on your page so i really hate getting it getting my drawings off center and it's very hard to adjust that when you're like halfway in your, your um, sketch. So it's a good idea actually to just make these little marks when you're feeling like um, you really want to be careful. And uh, it is also a very quick and easy way to provide a little bit of structure before you go in with a pen. So just a quick reminder, this video will be in real time, so if you feel like it's too slow for you, you can always adjust the playback speed to your liking. And by the way, my voice does sound kind of weird because I've been sick for close to a whole month and I just can't get my voice back to normal, sadly, so yeah. So I am using this TWSBI or Twisby Eco Fountain Pen with a broad nib and um, inside this pen is the brown noodler's ink and this ink is, um, is supposed to be water resistant but if you don't give it enough time to dry on the paper or somehow you get accidentally like get rainwater on it it does smear so you need to give it enough time on the paper and just let it dry so this ink is advertised as bulletproof but um, if you watched my Prague um, Riverside sketching video um, there was a light drizzle and the water got on the page before it had time to completely dry so the ink um, just smeared even though it was also uh, a black color it was also the same noodler's ink that is advertised as bulletproof so for this piece i am not going to focus on following all the details i am being quite liberal with those crooked lines right here and I am, but I am really careful with the overall structure. I'm trying to maintain um, the essence of it. But everything else is uh, generally a loose representation of the original um, building or restaurant. In fact, I'm going to be changing the color scheme a little bit as well to make it a little less monotonous. So you can see I worked my way from the center 
and I drew the signboard and the awning. And then from there, I drew the lower half with some simple lines, leaving the bottom first because I want to add those, maybe I want to add those tables and those chairs later. And then I'm starting with the top half by drawing what I can only describe as these uh, castle lines. And you can be neat. I prefer to let it go and, you know, see what happens. So the choices you make when drawing shows who you are. Like, neat people will usually have neater drawings. Bolder people will have bolder drawings and, you know, Maybe funny people will have funny drawings. At least I think so. Let me know if you think so down in the comments below. After drawing the top window, I am now adding some lines for the texture on the wall. And sometimes I go a little faster and the ink doesn't flow out enough with this nib. Or I don't hold this pen in the perfect angle, so the ink won't flow out really well. And that works in my advantage sometimes because I do like lines that have variable width and are broken up.
Now I am drawing in the doorway and also the two signboards on the left and right, and I will be omitting the banner that is blocking a little bit of the top half of that door because, well, I don't like it there, and I think this place will look better without it. I decided to only draw one table on the right side and a couple of stools to simplify this piece as well. So I am making quite a few changes to this one based on what I think should work better. However, I do like the barrel, so that is going in as well. And so far, everything is coming out a little bit crooked, but not to worry, it's all good. It's all good. On a side note, this restaurant is called Murano, but it is it was not in Italy, it is in Prague, and I think it is more a bakery than a restaurant actually. But to me, it actually looks kind of like a bar or a cafe, so I found this place quite interesting. Um, but I always hesitate to add the words, because adding big words there right in the center and as well as uh, words like Murano which is very identifiable um, that will definitely um, attract the viewer's eye it will become it might also become the main focus but I want the focus to not be on what the place is and what it's called but um, rather on the atmosphere, the building, and the details. And maybe people would think about who lives here, like on this uh, second floor, and who frequents this restaurant, and not on what name it is, what, in, in what location it is, but rather on the story of this place.
I was really attracted to this upper right second floor portion with the rounded corners and the little windows and it's jutting over that corner a little bit like a balcony and the details on this portion here is really beautiful and I like to think like someone lives above this shop and has that corner window area to sort of chill in, have a, have a coffee, um, maybe read a book and watch the city go by. And then downstairs is the busy shop with people eating gelato, having their coffees and their Aperol spritzes, you know, just everyday life. Now I am drawing more of those lines and they are really important aspects of this building they, because they help with perspective as well. And by the way, this pen nib is a little bit fussy. You can't turn it around too much because the ink only flows smoothly when you maintain the same um, angle. So sometimes you will see some scratchy lines and I do repeat the lines if the ink doesn't come out well. So I'm still getting used to this nib on this fountain pen. However, I do really love the effect that it gives to my line work. Like I like those 
thick lines, and when you pause at the end of the line, the ink sort of flows out a little bit more, so you get a slightly thicker ending. So that gives this piece some added character. Here I am adding the finishing touches and the last few details for this piece. Now I felt like the color scheme would be a little bit flat and the structures and details are great but color wise I thought it could look a little more eye catching and pleasing if there were some greens so I added a few plants to the left hand side at the bottom because I couldn't help myself just I had to add a little bit of green Again, using that artistic license and making some little changes, it's all good. It's all good. So I actually was happy with this line work for that day and I didn't complete this until a few weeks later because you know life tends to get in the way these days and I was sick. I know it's an excuse but that's okay. The important thing is you come back eventually to finish it. So when I came back, somehow I wanted to draw the guy in front. It seems like there is no space, but maybe we can make it work. So to be safe, I used a pencil to draw the person sitting on the stool outside first. First thing, very important when you draw people um, with a background, it's very important that you have the the height of the person in the right um, yeah, the correct height so I drew the oval for the head at the correct height so you have to compare it to the door height and as well as the table height and once you have it in the right position then I add the body and also the legs so it's easier if you have a reference, like the table and the chairs, as well as the photo. And next is drawing the ink outlines. And I already have the proportions down, so I, start, I started with the less stressful body shape and hands. So I find that the face is more um, challenging for me and if I do the face first, it, it is very risky for me because I haven't warmed up my hand 
And so I start with the body and then、um, the hands, and then I follow that with the legs. And then finally, I go back to the head because I know where everything is. I don't have to stress about like, how tall this guy is. And I just focus on the details and the, the posture and the, you know, the,、um, the small little details because pen is non erasable. So you do have to be quite careful. And the funny thing is, I drew this guy. With、uh, a better posture. In the photo, he has a, a very curved back. And just looking at that makes, makes me feel like, it,、uh, well, I have so much pain in my back. So、uh, naturally, I made him、um, sit up straighter. <laughs> yeah. So when I'm using such a thick pen,、um, you, you can't get that much detail in.、Um, like, The small little things,、um, they just get a bit lost. But that's actually、um, perfect for when you want to simplify things. So you can't got, get caught up in the little tiny details. So you have, a, you have this、um, obligation to look at the big picture instead of the tiny little things. Now, I am adding some finishing touches. So, this video is in real time, so I am not cutting out even the tiny little adjustments that I'm making on this one. So, it really takes time to refine. So, it is not a joke, it does take quite a long time.
So after the outlines were done, I waited a few minutes for the ink to dry before I started rubbing out the pencil marks. So don't rub too hard. I prefer to use a kneadable eraser, which is softer as well. Now I'm getting my brushes ready and mostly I'm using synthetic brushes and also these are my watercolors that I'll be using and I plan on having a simple color scheme for this piece so I'm going to start with the orange yellow color which is the main color for this piece so right now I'm mixing four colors which is the yellow ochre burnt umber, um, cadmium yellow hue, plus cadmium red pale hue. Yeah, quite a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm mixing all these colors together and sometimes I'm adding a bit more of um, one color just to uh, get the right mix and then I'm testing it out on a cheap um, watercolor paper. Now I'm mixing a second lighter orange with cadmium yellow hue, cadmium red pale hue again, and alizarin crimson hue. So just a tiny bit of cerulean blue hue and burnt umber um, was used to dull that bright orange down a little bit as well. So now we're going to start with the lower half first and I'm going to alternate between this uh, darker orange yellow and the brighter orange yellow. So I'm using quite a loaded brush so the paint is really wet on the paper because I want to add some shadows and make some soft gradients before the paint dries. So you can see that I added the lighter um, yellow color to the bottom and it just seamlessly blended in with the darker yellow because the paints were wet. Now I'm using the same brush that I used just now. Um, it is a size 6 Princeton Aqua Elite and I had some of that uh, orange still on the brush and I just added a little ultramarine to the mix. So now I'm adding some shadows like so. So I really love that soft transi transition when the paint is wet. And now continuing on with the signboard, which is not really a signboard because there is basically nothing on it, but I am still convinced that I don't want any words on it. And um, 
One thing to note off is that I'm leaving some of these areas on the right side a little bit, um, a little spots. These little spots that are unpainted. So uh, I want the light to come from the top and slightly towards um, the right side. So I'm making the left side a little bit darker. So the same goes to the top half. I want the light to really shine um, in this direction that is uh, quite visible um, from the colors on this top half. And so the top half is actually visibly lighter and uh, I am trying to imitate some of the sun rays that is coming from the top right. So I prefer to actually start with the darker part of a piece first because sometimes you start out not being very sure of the colors and it's definitely easier to start at a region that will be a little bit darker because you can layer over any color mistakes with more watercolor to tweak the color later on. Whereas um, the lightest parts, such as the, the top part, they are tougher because you only have like one go at it. So if you don't like that layer, you can't layer over it to adjust it much because that will make it, you know, too dark. So of course you want to start with the lightest color with watercolor paintings, especially landscapes. But when you paint in like separate sections like this, I think it's a good idea not to start with the very lightest part first. That is just based on my own experience with ink and watercolor. Now I'm mixing some ultramarine with burnt sienna and after that I decided to add a little bit of cerulean blue and that produces a nice deep blue color. Now the original restaurant has an awning which is um, light brown in color which is almost the same as the walls. So to make it stand out a little bit, I am going to change it to this dark blue color. So blue is a nice complementary color to all that orange and whilst I'm painting, I'm also um, not forgetting to um, leave little spots unpainted so that it looks like the light is shining very brightly on these um, little spots as well as um, I'm also trying to make the left side of this awning a little bit darker and um, to show a contrast between the left and the right.
So if you want this piece to sort of pop a little more, maybe you could make the awning or this guy's coat a red color instead. Or you could do some stripes. So striped awnings, they never seem to go wrong. They always grab my attention. So those are uh, directions that you could um, go down. And um, right now I am painting the insides of the interior of this shop, which is the most tricky part, I think. As you can see, I started with a few orange dots um, first for the lights inside, and then I quickly um, painted around those orange spots using the dark blue. And then after that, I added a little more burnt sienna to make the mix a bit warmer and grayer towards the bottom. Here I am adding some shadows to the floor and um, also to the barrel and um, to the below the tables as well and tables and chairs as well as to um, the area below the awning. Now I'm painting the top window a very very light um, blue color and I'm really I really washed out the dark blue that we used earlier I'm basically using the same color So I'm now adding subsequent layers of blue to make some shadows as well as reflections.
Now I am adding some stronger orange color for certain darker areas. So that sort of spices things up a little bit and doesn't make this piece look so flat and dull. I do think this piece is coming together pretty well, even though there aren't a lot of colors. Um, I did plan to have a very simple color scheme and so far I am sticking only to orange and blue and um, later on I will have that uh, green for the little plants at the bottom and so far at this stage I'm still deciding if I need more um, contrasting colors to make it more interesting. Now I'm going to add some darker shadows with another layer of the same dark blue. So this stage is when you really have to look back at your reference and check for shadows and values and really notice which areas need to be darker.
All right, so finally, I'm mixing the green um, with some sap green plus ultramarine and burnt sienna. So I'm making a very warm and sort of dull green, but I don't want it to really stand out. I don't want it to be a really bright green color. And um, it's, it's just a complementary to everything else. So I don't want to bring too much attention to it. So for this, I am first dotting in some orange and then I'm painting in the green. It's a very simple process, nothing complicated. Here I am adding some green to the top right window. I mean, who knows, maybe there could be some plants there. So there are times when I follow every detail in the original subject, but for this one, the subject is basically my inspiration and I am using my artistic license to change things up as I see fit and that hopefully makes a more compelling piece that uh, people will find attractive and will find interesting to look at. Now I'm starting to paint the signboards on the bottom and I don't want any details. I just want some color and some shapes. So I, I want to make it sort of impressionistic or abstract even. At this point, I decided that alright, this needs a little bit more color, so right now I am mixing some burnt sienna and I am adding that burnt sienna to the pots and um, all over this illustration.
Here I am adding some green for the interior as well as some deeper shadows so that you can really see that this is inside and from the reference photo it is actually very dark inside so I'm trying to um, adjust that value. Alright, so it seems like the interior really needs some highlights, so I'm using some white gouache to save the day. And because there are a lot of little reflections in the photo, so I would like to capture that. And it is very hard to do that with just watercolor.
So now I'm adding some finishing touches wherever it is needed. Maybe some shadows, maybe more color. Um, so this is based on a gut feeling and not based on the reference photo. So it is very hard to kind of teach this. But um, as you paint more, you will kind of uh, get a sense of when you should stop adding these um, finishing touches. Alright, so it's done. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful to you, do remember to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any recommendations for future videos, do comment down below as well. I would love to hear what you have to say. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.